Hello, Wuzwer here, back with another video. And today we're finishing off the brawlers by covering the combat brawlers and the support brawlers in the same video. If you want to check out the other videos which cover the artisan and combat skills, check out the descriptions as links to those will be in the description of the video. You can really get a ton of great experience from those, so be sure to check them out if you haven't seen it. Starting off with the combat brawlers, specifically mage, melee, and range. They are the most unique brawlers as they are the only ones that give you a set amount of bonus experience per brawler instead of losing one charge per XP drop. That means it really doesn't matter where you use them as the only thing that the wilderness does is speed up how long it takes to use them. And to be in the wilderness and to use them you're either killing creatures that are lower XP or you're killing them with gear that is worse. So you're actually getting a lot less out of it unless you're doing something like Abbey Demons on a Slayer contract with really high risk uh, gear. You're just going to end up being better off using them on a Slayer task where your glove slot isn't as big of a deal. Stuff like Abyssal Demons are perfect for them, uh, just AFK and get that sweet extra XP. But basically you can use them anywhere you do combat, so don't worry about focusing on a specific location. Prayer, which is technically a combat skill, doesn't work like the other combat brawlers and instead works like all of the other brawlers where each XP drop produces one charge. This means we want to maximize our XP drop and maximize the amount of experience we can get per action. For this we're going to head back to Mage Bank. But before we get into all of it, we need to talk about a special little item that the Prayer Brawlers have, and that's the Dragon Rider Amulet. It's a reward from the quest one of a kind, which requires 40 divination, 67 dungeoneering, 81 magic, and 74 summoning. On top of that, there are some quests that are required which have other requirements, notably a Tale of Two Cats and King's Ransom. Not the highest requirements, but also not something where you can just stroll up and grab it right away. You gotta work for it. The Dragon Rider Amulet is a great combat amulet, but on top of that it also has the special ability that all dragon type bones give two times experience when buried. This includes baby dragon bones, dragon bones, hardened dragon bones, frost dragon bones, and reinforce it dragon bones. Basically, if it has dragon in the bone title, it works. The amulet stacks with brawlers to get eight times XP, and if you're able to get enough bonus experience that stacks again to 16 times experience. Now the bone that you choose to use is heavily based on how much you value your time, but for pretty much everyone, frost dragon bones are the correct option, as the increase in XP over dragon modes and hardened dragon modes is worth the extra cost it is to use them. And with reinforced dragon bones, only giving 10 more base XP over frost dragon bones for an extra about 6 to 7k GP, it's only worth it if you can pull in the 35 mil plus per hour from AOD or high enraged Telos. I would just stick to frost. Another thing to note is that bones go up heavily during the yak track promotions as it's a common task to have to bury bones and people just buy it whatever bone they can. So try to stock up or do the brawlers when the yak tracks aren't live. They work on a six week on, six week off sort of schedule. So make sure you do it in those six weeks off. In terms of gear setup, you wanna make sure you have four pieces of the first stage outfit on. The fifth item is the amulet. So it can't be worn at the same time as the dragon rider amulet and the dragon rider amulet gives us two times XP. So it's much better than just that 1% XP. Wield your Enhanced Excalibur or Offhand Augmented Crystal Dagger with Wise on it for some extra XP. On top of that, you want to max out your XP boost with things like Avatar, Pulse Cores, Auras, and Torso Stick. The actual doing of the Prayer Brawlers is pretty simple. It's not that complicated, so you should be able to get this after watching me do one inventory. Just load up a preset and Mage Bank and make sure to have a Beast of Burden filled with Bones as well so you can do more per trip. And then you pull on the lever to go to the wildy and start burying bones. Note that I'm using big bones here because I don't gain anything from the prayer experience as I'm already at 200 mil prayer and I wanted to save some GP here, but make sure you actually use frost. To bury bones quickly, just put them on your action bar and hold down the button. As with all skilling methods, I like to have it on Z and X because of its proximity to spacebar. It takes a second to ramp up, but eventually you'll be doing one bone per tick. When your inventory is empty, take from your Beast of Burden, which I key bound to X, and then rinse repeat until the brawlers are done. They last for a total of 1274 charges, meaning you can get upwards of 2 mil XP for one brawler while using the Frost Dragon Bones if you have some good boosts. Now it's time for the support brawlers, and the easier one is going first, Agility. 
Agility Brawlers kind of suck, as there's really only one place to use it in the wilderness, but you're bound to get PK'd before you ever end up using them if you try to use them at that location. The Wilderness Agility Course, I highly doubt you'll be able to get through 439 laps without seeing a single PKer. And one death means that you lose the entire Brawler, so you get much more out of it by using it not in the wilderness. And with the release of the Anachronia Agility Course, there's actually a great place to use it. Before, they used to just kind of rot away in the bank. The Anachronia Agility Course has the biggest XP drop of all of the courses you end at, and it is a 19,000 XP drop. Make sure to take the brawlers off as you do the rest of the obstacles as to not waste charges because if you do that you'll end up using like 60 or 70 charges per lap. However it should be noted that you get 3 XP drops to end the lap, 20 XP for the obstacle, 150 XP for completing a section, and 19,000 for completing the lap so it uses 3 charges even though you actually only think you have 1 XP drop. Those 146 laps should take you about 14 to 15 hours to complete as you're able to get sub 6 minute laps consistently and if you want a guide on how to do that uh, click on the card in the top right of the screen as that will take you there. In those 14 to 15 hours though you should be able to complete 3 of the double surge or double escape codex books as well netting you about 130 to 140 mil so you're making about 8 to 10 mil per hour while you're there as well. So I'm swapping over to live commentary for the Thieving Brawlers. The very first thing you want to do is teleport to the Wildy Lodestone. That lets you um, get right by this obelisk where if you have the Elite Wilderness task, you can pick your location, and I'm picking out by the Rogue's Den. But if you don't have the ability to pick your location, just travel through this obelisk until you end up right here at the Rogue's Den. Then we go inside the building and upstairs to the safes. So the problem with using Thieving Brawlers here is if we try to crack open this safe, we get an XP drop every tick. So that XP drop will use our Brawlers incredibly quickly. So what we're going to do is we're going to wait till we're at 3 out of 4 dialogues and then we're going to drop our stethoscope so it almost always fails. Now we're 3 out of 4 so we drop our stethoscope and now it's when the thing turns blue it's going to almost assuredly fail because we're at a high level one without a stethoscope. So I brought along these attuned crystal gloves to represent um, the brawlers. So what you do is you just drag it onto your action bar and now it'll be where. So I put them on and then I click the safe and um, I get the XP drop with the brawlers on. Then as I move on to the next safe, I make sure to take my brawlers off so I don't use them. And booyah, I can start doing this safe, and again, when it gets to 3 out of 4, I drop the stethoscope. Thieving Brawlers last a total of about 1,000 chargers. I don't have the exact number, as I currently don't own any, and the wiki doesn't have the information available. I asked my friends, but none of them had any in the bank. And we use two of those charges per safe, so you're looking at about 500 total safes to open with it. You use up one charge for the opening XP drop, and one for the XP drop that you get with every tick. So that's going to make it a last a long time, meaning it's going to take you a long time to use it. But if you spin that into a positive, you're going to have a long time of four times experience with this safe, totaling about 15 to 20 mil XP if you're able to use all of it. To avoid PKers, I would suggest going to a foreign language world as they are considerably less likely to PK you at safes. One very important thing that you need to know about with these safes is if you have the Master's Thieves stethoscope on your tool belt, you cannot do this method as there is no way to drop the stethoscope from your tool belt. So at that point, you should just put the brawlers on when it gets to three out of four dialogues, using up more charges per safe, but still getting the big XP drop on the safe. That's gonna do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like the type of content I'm creating, consider subscribing or dropping a like on the video. I really appreciate every one of you, but past that, have a good day and I'll catch you in the next one.